In the public sector, the need has never been greater to do more with less. Information technology is now being used widely for e-government applications so that public services can be delivered faster, less expensively, and in many cases, better. People would rather be online than in line. There's still a lot of design thinking and planning thinking and policy thinking and technical thinking that needs to be done on this. But we, um, we really do start to see this. So, you know, I really don't miss um, lining up at the Department of Motor Vehicles to get my um, driving license renewed. I, you know, kiss that goodbye and I'm extremely happy that I can do that on the web. And, you know, step by step, it's, uh, I think, a very logical and appropriate um, way of extending the effectiveness of government to do this. And, you know, I think it's a no-brainer. It looks like these issues will be no more important in any aspect of the public sector than with e-democracy, where people are deciding how to govern themselves. Increasingly, the, um, you know, the possibility exists for the um, kind of nexus of formalized debate in government to shift away from physical places of, of the, you know, the chamber of the House of Commons or the, um, you know, the place for the town meeting in a, um, in, in a New England town. Then how do you structure that technically? What kinds of environments do you actually make to do that? And then there are the interesting issues of who gets to participate, how do you control that, um, how do you establish legitimacy. All ancient classical political questions, nothing new about the questions, but they, they get reframed when they put them in this new cyberspace context. So, and um, also, of course, techniques for um, grassroots political organisation, maybe hyped a bit more than the reality actually bears out, but nonetheless real and important, and I'm sure the next presidential election is um, you know, going to be very much shaped by that. The Open Gov project of MIT's e-commerce architecture program explored new ways to allow limitless numbers of people to participate directly in e-democracy, in the process of self-governance. Currently, it's not possible for people to govern themselves fully democratically in any effective way that I've ever heard of in groups of greater than two, three, four hundred people. We have Roberts rules, we have parliamentary rules, we have different ways to structure meetings of people, but they all top out at a few hundred people. It's now possible with open gov technologies developed at MIT's Media Lab to allow for new generation, network era, self-organizing democratic decision making, what we sometimes call ascendant democracy, where it's possible for the group in the aggregate through filter technology to identify those topics which are going to be most important and where it's possible through open source, open standards and open content models for people to make their own decisions about what it is they'll be voting on. The voting part of course is easy. There's software that's been developed since the beginnings of computer science that allow people to vote and can tally votes. More interesting and perhaps even more transformational is deciding how is it that people can determine in the first place, what are we voting on? How do we frame the issues?